Hi everyone, this is Coach Carol and we're delighted to have Lisa Delaporte and Genevieve Murphy here with us tonight or this morning, I think it's really early morning over there in America and today they're going to talk to us about exploring responsible digital citizenship, a very topical topic. We need to say thank you to all of our sponsors and supporters and thanks to Adult Learning Australia, the Australia E-Series and Broadband for Seniors and the Learning Revolution. And that's a reminder that at the end you'll be given access to a feedback form from the Learning Revolution, so be ready for that. And of course all of our rooms are provided by Blackboard Collaborate. We do usually like to see where everyone's coming from, so I invite you to pick up the smiley face and put it in place. So you'll see me over there in Victoria, Australia. And there's Lisa. Uh, is that New York? I think it is. So we're spanning the globe and it's always difficult to get the right time between such vast distances. Thank you for sharing. Now Lisa is going to be talking us through the presentation today with the help of Genevieve and I wanted to let you know that Know My World is another of our partners and we have been listening to Lisa and Alicia a few times now and they are doing great things in collaborative learning across the world for students in a variety of situations. So I'm going to now hand over to Lisa, get you to put your mic on and you might like to introduce Genevieve as well. Take it away. Absolutely. Hi Carol, thank you so much for the welcome. Uh, it's great to be here at Aussie Live again this year. Um, so today we're going to be talking about exploring responsible digital citizenship. And as Carol said, uh, oh. Yeah, these uploaded a little off, but happens sometimes. <laughs> uh, my name is Lisa Delaport. I am Program Operations Manager at Know My World, so I uh, take care of a lot of the back-end things, make sure that all of our policies and procedures really support all of the different things that we do, uh, especially when it comes to connecting students and teachers in online collaborative exchanges. So. An interesting fact about me, I lived in the Galapagos Islands for a year and uh, did some of these projects while I was there with Know My World. And in my spare time, I'm a yoga teacher. So Alicia Resigno is uh, one of the co-presenters for this presentation and she came down with a fever last evening. Um, she's our Educational Coordination Manager and IT Specialist. So uh, Genevieve and I are going to work to cover her slides and still bring this information to you, um, but just that's where she is at the moment. And Genevieve is here as well. So Genevieve, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, yes. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Genevieve Murphy and I'm the co-founder of Know My World as well as the Global Development Director. I connect with schools around the world. and try and teach our philosophy and share our programs and projects with them. And I'm also a teacher at the American School in Taichung, uh, where I live here in Taiwan. Perfect. Thank you. So just a short overview of what, we, what the presentation is going to look like today. First, we're just going to do a brief uh, informational piece about Know My World and how we work. And then we're going to start exploring this concept of what it means to be a responsible digital citizen, um, especially inside of online collaborative communities. Uh, so we'll touch on some key terms. And then we will go into technology that supports responsible digital citizenship. And finally, Genevieve will go over some examples from Know My World for how we implement digital citizenship. 
So a little bit about Know My World, we, we focus in three different areas, social and emotional learning, intercultural communication, and cultural competency, all as a way uh, to contribute powerfully to the global workforce and really create projects that impact social change and have uh, global conversations. So we do this through our teacher training, professional development, our projects and our programs, uh, which Genevieve will touch on some of those today, and through digital exchanges. And so this is really the area that we'll focus on today inside of looking at responsible citizenship uh, in online collaborative communities. And the focus that we use inside of the projects we build with teachers who are connecting with one another across the world is uh, this is the CCAL model. So focusing on social and emotional learning, cultural competency, uh, and academic learning outcomes. So making sure that there are pieces of those inside of all of the projects so students are getting uh, as deep and enriching an experience as possible. So what does it mean to be a responsible digital citizen in collaborative online learning communities? Right, so that sounds a little bit like a mouthful. But really a collaborative online learning community is anywhere that groups of people are coming together to share and learn from one another. So in this case, it's digital cross-cultural exchanges for no matter well, when students are connecting with one another um, to learn. And being a responsible digital citizen um, is going to start inside of each of our classrooms, right, and what we teach our students. So, right, there's always this uh, concept of what works for you inside of your classroom, to tech or not to tech. Does it work for you to have cell phones in your classroom? Are you embracing what the students are using? Or do you find that it's distracting? So inside of each of our classrooms, we have a different culture and a different community um, that's going to teach students something different about being a responsible global citizen and a responsible digital citizen, really. Um, so looking at what it means to be a responsible digital citizen, the first thing that we have to look at inside of this conversation is what it means to be a responsible global citizen, right? So inside of our classrooms, we have conversations about technology. We have uh, knowledge, values, attitudes, skills that we really focus on teaching them. Um, so the concept of equity that we teach them inside of our classrooms, you know, equal distribution, uh, different attitudes when it comes to empathy and understanding um, our own identities and creating certain sense of self being valuing and respecting, you know, the different places that we each come from just inside of our own classroom um, are the first steps to preparing them to go out there and, you know, interact socially with people in other parts of the world. And under skills, uh, an important piece to pull out is, you know, the ability to discuss things effectively. And so like a term always that we, that we tend to focus on inside of conversation is using dialogue, creating dialogue so they can uh, converse with one another versus arguing or debate. Um, and really focusing on critical thinking skills. So when we ask students to communicate cross-culturally and, and even in the classroom because that's really where it starts, you know, getting them to question, okay, well, where does this come from and why is this happening? and really getting them to dig deeper as opposed to just accepting things for the way that, ways that they are. Um, Genevieve, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Hi, Lisa, it's Carol. Uh, just yeah. wanted to suggest that you click the away button again so ah. that it shows you in the room. That's better. Got it. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay. yes, I concur with everything you said there about the responsible global citizen. And uh, uh, I do have a question uh, whether sure. or not there is a link, a link to the global citizenship. Um, i am forgotten the word that they use, but the, the criteria that everyone can look at. So that might be coming up in a, your presentation, not sure. 
Um, I actually don't have that link, um, but that is, and there are a couple of different conversations about um, defining them. Uh, that I'm thinking of, you know, age of society, global competency, um, right? And it's, it's, it is sort of a, a, a new conversation for, right, like who's defining what terms and like what does it mean, which is why it's sort of, which is why it's a topic of conversation because, you know, what does it mean for you? And it does start inside of each of our classrooms and you know, having the conversation is really the first step towards getting students to uh, interact and accept and adapt to one another's cultures and be able to share with one another. Um, exactly. And just to jump in real quick, I noticed Wendy you made a comment as far about empathy being an interesting topic and that's exactly correct. Um, you know, our ultimate goal and something we I reiterate again later in this presentation um, is that we want our students to be responsible global citizens. But that's that's like the end goal, the end result. And so as educators and kind of our job in the classroom is to figure out what are the steps that need to be taken to reach that goal for our students. And incorporating concepts of empathy and cultural awareness, cultural sensitivity, um, communication skills, personal responsibility, all of these things are kind of stepping stones to that final end point or goal where students are then able to interact and collaborate and communicate with people um, in a responsible and respectful um, yeah, and empathetic way for sure. So that's a really good point, Lindy. Thank you for bringing that up. Awesome. Thank you, Genevieve. Yeah, um, being empathetic, being aware of, you know, especially because things are constantly changing um, in the digital world in which we live. So um, I pulled a great quote here from one of the articles I was reading about how global citizenship empowers individual human beings to participate in decisions concerning their lives. And really, creating collaborative online communities allows students an experience to sort of step outside the world uh, that they just have in their backyard and the things that they're learning in just their classrooms to get sort of an outside view, you know, about, you know, political, economic, social, cultural, and environmental conditions. Uh, because we all do affect one another in more ways, especially since we're becoming more and more interconnected. So having uh, outside opinions and, and, and new eyes on issues that we're talking about and dealing with in our lives really will contribute to uh, making the world a better place in the end. Um, so again, you know, what does it mean to be a responsible digital citizen in collaborative online learning communities? So now that we've covered what it is inside of the classroom, um, taking it to the broader range and the wider range, uh, really looking at some of the key points inside of this conversation, right? So once students start connecting with one another, there are conversations that, again, happen inside of the classroom that are going to be looked at in a more broader scale, so focusing on ethical behavior of students inside of these conversations, privacy concerns, and there are all different age ranges that are exploring these sorts of online collaborative communities and really instilling a sense of cultural awareness and sensitivity um, into the conversation, which is, you know, again, where, you know, the critical thinking skills and the empathy and all those different pieces come into play. So, um, I, I apologize for the slides as well. Um, as they upload, they do tend to get a little muddled. Um, you know, so ethical behavior, you know, and it all starts, again, inside of our classrooms. So different classrooms from different cultures are coming in with different codes of conduct, right? The ways that we're taught to behave inside of our own environment. And so it's, you know, inside of group dynamics, learning to, you know, form with a different group of people in you know a short period of time is 
something, you know, that is going to be a little different based on the different ages of the students and the level of uh, connectedness that happens. Uh, you know, with technology, there are all sorts of different ways to connect, and we'll get a little bit more into that as we move on. Um, you know, the conversations, building projects around what they're doing, how they're going to interact with one another, uh, it's really going to be based on what they're taught inside of their classrooms. And, you know, an important piece in all of these conversations is really uh, preparing students with the necessary communication skills so they can, you know, share what it is that works for them and and, and what doesn't. Um, so what they're comfortable talking about and what they're not comfortable talking about. Um, and then being aware of the differences enough. Um, because inside the conversation of ethical behavior, you know, something to be aware of is that cyberbullying can occur if we're not making sure that we're being responsible as educators to work with our students uh, and make sure that their environment is created where people are being accepted and the conversations are getting deeper into social and emotional and cultural awareness um, so it doesn't turn into something such as cyberbullying. Um, Genevieve, is there anything that you wanted to add to the slide? Yeah, um, well, just kind of reiterating what you said, but really stressing the importance of teaching students um, responsibility uh, for their words and for their word choice and really understanding, helping them understand that their words uh, have an impact on other people. And while, especially in cyberbullying, they can't see another person's face and so maybe they don't feel that it's really that bad or that insulting or that hurtful. Um, helping them understand that their words land for the other person in a negative way and that it is their responsibility to be mindful of their word choice and to choose words or to express themselves whether they have a difference of opinion or a different cultural perspective or whatever it is that they're able to express express themselves, but to do it in a way that is respectful and mindful and conscious of what they're saying, how they're saying it, and how it lands for the other, for the receiver, um, ultimately. Awesome, yeah, that, that's a really great point, and, you know, your conversation really pulls me down to the quote here, and, you know, on the one side being aware of how it can affect people, and also being aware of the impact that these conversations have on how um, these conversations can change the world when we're responsible with them. You know, that's what responsibility has to offer, is transformation inside the globe on the planet. And these are um, things to be aware of even within the classroom, so not just on through cyber yeah. um, and through computers and technology, but also just within the classroom environment as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's where it all starts. Um, you know, because even inside of our classrooms, I know a lot of teachers in New Genity specifically work at uh, an international school. So inside of just your classroom, there's, there's an international community. There's students with a different sense of national pride who are really proud of where they come from, who, you know, really want to share, you know, their values and who they are and the culture that they share in their families um, that, you know, can be brought to school. Um, and so, you know, inside of this conversation, really creating a space for students to show up as curious and interested so they can learn from one another and so they can share from one another. Um, and having conversations about respect towards one another um, and, and acceptance, right? And so this is where the empathy piece comes in, like understanding uh, even if we don't necessarily agree with someone else's point of view, really having the ability to look at someone else's perspective so we can understand where they're coming from um, and be able to you know, make a choice or a difference based on that understanding. Uh, and again, inside of this conversation, communication is uh, such an integral piece at giving students a voice, empowering them to be able to share who they are and find ways to be proud of who they are um, and giving them the necessary skills 
to cooperate and resolve conflict, right? Because there are different emotions that come up around self-identity um, and these different conversations. So really having the tools to be able to work through uh, the storming stage of group dynamics um, so they can go back to norming and connecting on a deeper level. So instead of this conversation, something to be aware of is to making sure that stereotypes are being enforced. So as educators, there's, there's a responsibility to make sure that we're using essential questions uh, and critical thinking skills to really pull students into conversations that get them to focus on these social, emotional, and cultural skills, you know, acceptance and empathy, um, getting them to understand and value diversity so it doesn't become just a very surface conversation. Um, a lot of times online collaborations can turn into um, these very basic exchanges. And so we really focus at Know My World on getting to deeper pieces of culture uh, and talking about concepts that are sort of hidden underneath uh, the basic conversations of you know, the weather and what we like and what we don't like and things like that to really get to the human experience of it all. So, Genevieve, is there anything else there? Um, yeah, no, that was uh, pretty thorough, but just um, as an educator, a way that you can do that and, and create those deeper conversations is just through having conversations with your students and creating your objectives or your reflective questions or your class discussion topics on uh, that incorporate topics that are on the deeper level, so beyond just what do you like and where are you from and what sports do you play, but questions about current events or global issues or um, personal life experiences or thoughts or feelings or emotions. And a lot of those topics that we kind of are most afraid to touch upon are the ones that are really going to cultivate and, and create rich conversations and stronger relationships and uh, deeper understanding um, in these realms of social, emotional, cultural um, learning. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the deeper conversation, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind for me is, you know, like the, the ways that we deal with love, or the ways that we deal with death, or the ways that we deal with time, um, which obviously takes some time and some building and some uh, navigating of uh, essential questions to get students to those points. <laughs> um, but around poetry or, you know, lots of different units can incorporate those sorts of conversations, and it is important to have those uh, deeper level conversations. Uh, so the last piece, um, and a very important piece as we begin to transition into the technology part of the presentation, is focusing on privacy. So, you know, we all have different rights and responsibilities um, as, as digital citizens. And really making sure, and again, it starts in the classroom, like making sure students understand um, that as both users and producers of information, um, what their responsibilities are, right? They're online and they're using this information and they share things. They go on and they post things on applications. And, you know, so what does it mean to, you know, have a digital footprint? How does that show up? Where will that show up in their future when it comes to employment? Um, when they're looking at using information, where are you getting, where are you getting your information? Especially if you're going to connect with another culture and you want to learn a little bit more about them. Where are you going to get your information? And have, have we as educators been responsible in making sure students know how to seek out the information that's going to support them? Have we been educating them on, you know, the signs to look for to maybe not uh, trust a certain site? Um, so, and if, you know, there are always things changing in the world of technology. So, you know, an important piece as, you know, responsible educators who are teaching digital citizens, it is important for us to make sure that we're staying on top of those conversations. So, um, getting ready to transfer into the technology piece. Is there anything else, Genevieve, before we move on? 
Um, no, I think that's pretty good with the privacy. Sure. Um, okay, so what technology supports creating responsible digital citizens? Wow. Um, there's lots of different social media, and again, this is uh, this is Alicia's piece of the presentation. So Genevieve and I are going to be going uh, a bit back and forth and sharing what you know from uh, talking with Alicia about this. Um, she's our technology specialist and educational program manager who uh, cannot be with us this morning or evening, depending on where you are in the world, um, due to uh, the flu, as we said before. So. Inside of uh, collaborative online learning communities, there are lots of different technologies that are used based on the types of exchange that you're doing. So really being aware of what technologies went into these exchanges um, and what we're allowing students, what we're giving them to utilize inside of the exchanges with one another. Um, so right. Students are on different applications all the time. They use Instagram, they use Twitter, um, they use Facebook, uh, depending on the age of the student and how does it change a little bit too. So being aware of uh, how these applications are used in order to guide them, right? So there are different privacy settings that where with Instagram they can uh, share who they want to follow them on there. So it's, it's uh, an exchange. Where it, I mean, even if you just do something with your own platform and you're creating, um, yes, yeah, Snapchat is popular too. Yeah, I've seen Snapchat too. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and social media is totally different in, in different cultures and countries. And so as students connect, it's like, hey, check out this app. Hey, check out that app. And they want to share with each other, especially when it comes to technology. So like really being mindful and aware and creating a conversation with students are comfortable um, talking to us about those things. So if we create classroom uh, exchanges where you know everybody takes Instagrams and they're only following each other so they understand that privacy setting and they're in a conversation about privacy, then when they go into an online collaborative learning environment and a student says, hey, check this out they'll know to have that question, okay, well, you know, do I only follow you? Like, they'll be in the conversation of what does it mean to have, you know, a private connection with another person. And um, Kid Blog is one that uh, Genevieve uh, was talked about, and I believe she talked about in this presentation. Is that right, Genevieve? Yeah, um, I talk about, okay. uh, just kind of touch on using that one, but um, yeah, before, Moving forward on this uh, on this slide, um, touching based on what Anne mentioned, as far as different cultures and different countries having different apps, um, that's definitely true. So I guess based on your region of the world and where you are, really getting familiar with the apps that are being used by the students and how they're being used. And again, it's important, no matter what app it is, if it's being used for social media purposes, it's still teaching students that sense of responsibility and how to communicate and share in a respectful way, in a responsible way, in a private way, um, et cetera. So whether that's creating a hashtag for your classroom so that um, if you're using Twitter or Instagram in part of your assignments or your projects, you know that with the hashtag that all of whatever's being shared or uploaded is within a safe realm or creating a Facebook page that is set to a private class page. Um, so just researching what are the privacy settings on the different apps and then <coughs> creating ways that you can incorporate the apps into your classroom in creative ways because as you, um, some of you have mentioned, the students really like that instant gratification and they really like using apps. Everyone has their own device anyway, so how can you incorporate apps into your classroom in a way that's not only teaching, but allowing the kids to interact and then interact in a practice, interacting in a responsible way. So, I mean, some examples include things, um, like I said, with Instagram and Twitter, creating a class um, page or account or hashtag, um, and then kind of flipping your classroom, which is becoming a more commonly used phrase and, and concept, but letting the kids share what it is that they're learning through tweets 
or through a, a photo journaling um, using Instagram or having the kids keep a reflective journal on a blog um, that you're able to monitor or any kind of group project um, that they are doing, they can use Pinterest and pin activities to their board um, and share with each other. Um, Google community has tons of apps where they're able to interact and learn and, and work on things simultaneously um, and things like that. So there's really a ton of ways to use apps and it is just um, teaching the kids how to use these apps in responsible ways and giving them opportunities to practice in your classroom through your classroom assignments and projects. And that can be done even in lower elementary grades all the way up through um, high school and, and college and university levels as well. So there's tons of ways to use it and tons of, of flexibility and options in that, but teaching that, that core responsibility is, is vital. Awesome. Thank you, Genevieve. That's great. Yeah, I, I, uh, I jumped to the next slide because we're talking a little bit about Google community sort of moving from uh, applications that students uh, sort of like Snapchat and Instagram and Twitter sort of thing to the applications where students are uh, connecting with each other in uh, collaboration and communication where they're uh, sharing and they can have deeper conversations, right? So they're posting videos or answering essential questions, like Google Community is a great place to do that, to share projects, to answer questions. Facebook is one uh, that's popular among older students, right? And inside of this conversation, it, it changes uh, based on the level they're at, the, the age that they're at, the conversation that they're in. Um, so sort of moving from, you know, maybe sharing Instagram exchange where everyone understands to follow pictures and then moving into a little bit less, you know, another support place at Modo where they're having conversations. And as they get older and as we monitor them as educators and we can see where they are inside the conversations, it's easier to, you know, give them a little more reign so they can start having these conversations where we can still monitor and give them the freedom to be able to explore with one another. Um, so that's really what it is, being responsible for you know, when we, when and how we allow them to go out there so that we can really guide them um, in being, you know, as, as productive and responsive as possible out there in the world. Um, and just to comment on something that Anne said before, I'm sorry, was there something? I heard a breath. Do you want to say something? Carol? Um, no, but I think Carol, uh, yeah. Yeah, I do uh, wanted to um, pause you there just to, uh, bring in some of those comments that Anne was making. And yeah. I thought it might be nice if Anne could actually come to the microphone to voice those. And yeah. I can hear a lot of typing in the background with someone's mic, so you just be aware of that. Your microphone picks up everything. Yeah, so the first thing that I wanted to pull out that Anne said, and Anne, I'd love you to jump on the chat, um, was about uh, the, the immediacy. It seems that immediacy is a criteria by which some kind of learners judge the value of learning. And that's, you know, I mean, inside of this conversation for collaborative online learning communities, students love to connect on Skype or Google Hangout or any way where they can, like, see each other live. Um, that is always the most popular way. Like, videos are great. They love sharing things like that, but if they can really see them in a lot of time, like it's just, they have such an amazing and exciting experience because it's, I, I don't, yeah, I, I imagine there are a lot of reasons, <laughs> but it's right, like another part of the world is coming alive for them. Um, it's such a young experience when they're in a place where they're used to looking at a map on a wall and they see a color of a country. Um, and, you know, to see real people who live in that space really creates a different context for them. So, Anne, are you, is your mic on? Oh, yeah, hello. Um, I find exactly Hi. what you said, Lisa. Our students love to connect, and they particularly love to see what the students or people in other countries look like what they yeah. sound like and they love mm. to be able to ask questions immediately and I have just found in the last six months 
that mobile technology, when the students can be connected or networked with students in other countries, the conversations go on outside the classroom and there's just some amazing learning for them to do just amongst themselves, you know, like connecting with those mobile apps. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that's uh, absolutely um, both of those points. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the students are very interested in in getting to know what other students look like. And it's, you know, right, going back to the conversation before about uh, making sure that we're having those deeper conversations, too. So, like, the way that we work uh, the exchanges is, you know, and, and, and it's a couple of different ways. Some, some teachers like to have uh, Skype or Google video hangouts um, at the beginning and at the end, so like, they can get excited and see one another and share that experience, um, and then work through a project where they can get to know one another and get into those deeper questions and then reconnect and have uh, a deeper connected experience. Um, and some teachers like to, you know, do introductions in different ways with videos and using these applications, you know, whether it's Facebook, Kids Blog, and Moto, sharing pictures with one another and then finding a way to connect in the end. Uh, yeah, but really the ability to see one another and to connect on that human level while, you know, understanding that, you know, that's the thing that makes us the same and really being able to celebrate our differences at the same time and understanding that we do all come from different spaces as well is an important aspect of it all. Um, so really, you know, being responsible to respecting one another uh, and the things that we say we do or don't want to talk about based on, you know, the level of conversation that we're at. Uh, so that's always a good question to ask, especially, you know, as teachers, are there, is there anything that your students, you know, don't want to talk about? That's something that I encourage them to have conversations about. And a lot of the times, you know, as the exchanges go on and they, they get to know one another, it changes. Um, and, you know, allowing them the space to say, no, this isn't something I want to talk about right now give them uh, the freedom and the comfortability to still engage, um, making sure you know, privacy and safety are there for our students and, and really paying attention to the language that we use to be responsible for how our words were in for one another, as you know, Genevieve was pointing up before in uh, the earlier slides. So is there anything else you'd like to add to this, Genevieve, before we move on to um, sharing how we incorporate some of these things that Know My World? Um, no, I think it's been a pretty thorough conversation and it sounds like some of um, you have had personal experience with using the apps and, and, uh, in your classroom and, and are finding success in that. So apps are really great. They're wonderful resources and tools and just making sure that you're using them responsibly is, is important. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so I'll take over right. from here with yeah. um, just awesome. sharing. Yeah, so <laughs> so, yeah, so to talk about the responsible citizens track and know my will. Uh, Genevieve will take over and share a little bit about um, how she implemented uh, responsible citizenship at her school. Thanks, Genevieve. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Yes, yeah, so um, this next part shares something that uh, we've touched on and, and just again to reiterate is, is kind of like this backwards model where we know that we want our students to be responsible global citizens. Um, this track does in, incorporate global citizenship as well as responsible um, digital citizenship. Um, so if we want students to have that end goal of being responsible global digital citizens, what are the steps that we need to take that are kind of working backwards to give them the tools, give them the resources, give them the understanding and the practice in, in that. And so beginning with cultural awareness and, oh, sorry, <laughs> beginning with cultural awareness is very important. One way that I do that with my students is we create a class culture book. And 
and in this book, the students are responsible for creating two to three pages um, where they share aspects of their culture. And it could be anything, um, can be the surface topics. And again, I do teach elementary. This is my third grade students. So it is a little bit more surface conversations. But with middle and high school students, you can definitely get into more in-depth conversations. Again, by, by targeting your essential questions and making them a little bit deeper. Um, but with my students, they created two to three pages of about their culture, sharing things like their food, family, holidays, important people, or things from their country, um, really anything that they felt was important. And then these pages were collected and bound together into a class book. And I made one copy for each student so that they had their own, um, so they could keep and take home as a uh, memento of this. And then the next part is they are required to give a presentation where they share things about their culture and bring in something um, that is representative of their culture to share with their classmates. Um, <clears throat> so this not only gives them a chance to write about it, but now they can speak about it and there are tangible things in the as well. Um, sorry, I'm just noticing the chat. Yes, I'm sorry, let me give a little more background on my classroom. I teach at an international school here in Taiwan, and yes, we have a variety of students from all over the world. Um, I have a small class. Uh, this, uh, this example was from my students last year, and I had 12 students from eight different countries. So. Um, a lot of them are from countries here in Asia, um, including Japan, Korea, China, and Taiwan. Um, but there are some others um, as well, including America and France. So, um, so then they share and present their culture. Um, after that, I kind of create ways for the students to have personal experiences and interactions with each of the cultures. So we do this through playing games, through different art projects, um, students make the flags of their different, of each other's cultures, we do cooking classes, we do books, we listen to music, um, we celebrate holidays. So there's a lot of different ways that you can incorporate culture into your classroom. And the more the students interact with these cultures and have different interactive experiences, the more understanding that they have, and ultimately, the more sensitivity it creates. Also, the kids are having fun. They really enjoy these projects, and it's a good way to just have lively and interactive project-based lesson plans and learning experiences. So, as we mentioned before, communication is also a very important part of creating this class environment and creating global digital citizens. And once again, just to re reiterate the importance of teaching students about their words and the impact of their words and the value of their words and all of these things, which they may or may not be aware of. And so some of the things that I incorporate in my anti-bullying unit are things like labeling, where they really identify what they say and how they say it, or how they use their words to judge people, whether it's fairly or unfairly, and just being mindful of also how they identify themselves, um, how do they label themselves. And then we do a lot of role playing and interactive games and activities. And then I incorporated a book unit. Um, the Going to Girls Bathroom is a great book by Lee Sautry that touches on, or that incorporates the theme of anti bullying um, Later in the year, after we had done this unit, um, we, I worked with my students to create a class uh, story, and uh, we had a lot of class discussions and they had to choose the theme. And so 
they chose to write a story with the theme of not being a bully, which just reiterated for me that they really got the value and the importance of that topic and that concept, um, so much so that they brought it up again on their own volition later in the year, and we wound up creating a really great story, which we then digitalized and enjoyed watching. But it was a good way to re reiterate the concept from, of not being a bully and um, how instead how to be a friend. Once they had a stronger sense of cultural sensitivity, cultural awareness, how to be responsible in their communication, then they're ready for the next step of interacting and um, just like building a relationship with people in other parts of the world. And so the third part of what we do with this project is called Journal Swap for Peace. And in this project, the students are responsible for creating a blog or a PowerPoint, and they uh, write daily um, daily posts. And again, this is where you can incorporate essential questions that are a little bit deeper um, beyond the surface. And they write so they write their posts, and then the class my class is met, was matched with another class in another part of the world and there was a each student had a partner so they would share their blog with their partner and then their partner would share their blog with them and they were able to read each other's posts and comment responsibly and in this project I use kids blog because there are a lot of safety features and um, I can monitor every comment and every post and approve it before it gets shared publicly um, well, actually, it doesn't get shared publicly. It only gets shared between our two classes. Um, so it's a really great resource to use if you have lower elementary students. You want to give them that exposure to technology and let them start practicing. But you want to be able to monitor what they're saying and how they're using that technology. Um, so we use KidBlog, and um, and then we also had a Skype, not Skype, but we used another digital video conferencing platform for the students to connect and, and communicate as well. Um, and so that's just a very quick overview of um, how I incorporated um, all of those concepts into my curriculum with my students and just giving them opportunities to um, connect and share with, with others. Um, the more that the students can connect with other people and other peers around the world, the more culturally competent and digitally responsible they will be. Awesome. Thank you, Genevieve. That was great. Um, mm -hmm. So something that we added in uh, this presentation, especially uh, with our, uh, Alicia presenting her piece as thoroughly as uh, necessary, we uh, were as, as could have been. Um, we wanted to get some feedback um, from anyone for like how do you work to create responsible digital citizens in your classroom? Right, it is still um, a relatively new conversation. The more we're finding ways to connect with more people, uh, mess absolutely. Uh, hi, ladies. Nice to hear you here again. Um, I. I tend to use the real situation, so in, um, though I don't have a class this year, in the past in my classes we have a private Twitter account um, that is shared with parents and some other classes in, in our school sector and so we would share our learning there with parents and, and those classes mm -hmm. and we've had, we had some situations where people would friend us and sometimes they were students from the other class so we and and all people we didn't know uh, one turned out to be a father of one of the girls um, in the class so we had discussions about well what should we do here do we know these people well no we don't well how do they know who we are so <laughs> particularly when we, when it was um, around the students from the other class friending us because obviously they knew mm. how to because they were part of the class, we talked about what should we do here? Should we um, accept it or should we contact their teacher and let 
the teacher know that this child is, you know, using Twitter when he's only uh, 10 <laughs> and trying yeah. to connect with them? <laughs> it, it, I think that the only way to, per personally, I think the only way to teach digital, being a responsible digital citizen is to um, work in those environments with children and yeah. and let them see what what you need to think about when you're you're actually coming across this as as a person in the big wide world by yourself. Um, it's about having those experiences. Yeah, absolutely. And something else I heard inside of your sharing is getting parents on board with understanding how it works too, right? Like had you know letting the parents be aware of what's happening in the classroom so they can say, hey, I'm going to send an invite and so that they can get involved in being part of the discussion, right? Because parents at home don't have the same access as you do as teachers to uh, the ever-changing technology that we're using with the students. So really finding a way to get them involved in the conversation yeah, as well. I completely agree and, and I think um, though not a lot of the parents were on Twitter, it actually encouraged some of them to investigate what it was about and how they could use it, you know, just in their general lives. But it really generated some discussion. Um, we mm. also had blogs as a uh, blog as well, but that was a, a blog that was open to the world. So we had to have long, it was public, full, fully public. So we had to have um, quite detailed and long and serious discussions about what we place on that blog and the, ty the types of things we put on there and the information. So. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there were some really good conversations around, well, I don't think we should put pictures of our faces on there, but it's okay to have pictures of our hands holding things, you know, and we mm -hmm. shouldn't have our full names on there and all that sort of stuff. So it generates a lot of discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm actually, I'm going back to look at, you know, Anne's uh, response where she had a question uh, about the students inside of Genevieve's presentation about whether or not they connect with one on one uh, with the video conferencing or is it class to class and you know back to the conversation that we were just having this about you know whether to show our faces whether to um, just show our hands like when it comes to class to class video conferencing versus one on one video conferencing like I, you know allowing students the, the free range to do one on one video conferencing is really when you know you've gotten into a place where they understand all of the different pieces that we've gone through, you know, on this presentation, like really, you know, having the ability to work through conflict resolution, you know, understanding cultural sensitivity issues and what it is that, you know, how to be inside of those conversations. So it's really when students have gotten to those stages and, and looking at each situation, like what does the situation call for and being responsible for it and giving them the tools to be able to ask those questions. Um, and, and figure that out. Uh, yeah, blogging is a great way to learn digital citizenship as well. Yeah. Uh, perfect. So um, Genevieve had mentioned Journal Swap for Peace. So uh, I, I invite anyone who's interested to uh, email me if you're interested in participating in exchange like that, uh, getting connected one-to-one -one ratio, student-to-student. Um, to share in a journal swap experience, uh, please feel free to send me an email. And uh, just, are there any other questions um, that anybody has? All right. Well, here is our uh, contact and social media information. Jenny, is there anything else that you'd like to say before we get ready to conclude this? Um, no, just thank you for this opportunity to uh, sort of share a little bit about what we do and um, things that we've gathered um, along the way with using social media and using digital technology and in the works that we do. So thank you for your input and your insight and we really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Genevieve. Uh, thank you, Carol. Thank you, Ness. Um, thank you, Anne. Uh, here are the references we used throughout the slide. Um, and 
Yeah. I'll get up to the presenter, sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah. And that is all we have for this presentation. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much, um, Genevieve and Lisa. That was a, always a brilliant presentation. Um, it's always good to hear about how people can connect their classrooms to the big wide world out there and, and to be able to do that safely is really important, um, especially um, when you're working with young children. So thank you very much and thank you everyone um, for coming. Um, if you do require a certificate for your participation, if you go to the Aussie Live page and look for the Aussie Live 2016 menu and it's just under there in certificate. So thank you very much everyone.